I'm here to talk about a bunch of books that I read. I read four books and listened to half an audiobook in January, and I'm very excited about it. I, uh, my ratings are all over the place. It was an interesting reading month for sure. So I'm going to start just, I'm going to talk about them in the order that I read them. So first I read 13 Minutes by Sarah Pinborough, which I gave two out of five stars. I didn't really like it. Um, so this is about a girl who dies. She drowns in an icy cold river and she's dead for 13 minutes and she doesn't remember anything about it, but she suspects her friends had something to do with it. And it's not even really about her getting to the bottom of it. Like, it's weird. <laughs> It's, so it's written in a bunch of different formats. So it's written in third person narrative following one of her friends from elementary school. And in like uh, transcripts of conversations with a therapist between the girl who died and also the ex, the friend from elementary school, I think. And then also journal entries from the girl who died and text messages from the girl's that are suspected of doing some, having something to do with the girl's death. It's, it was kind of a mess a little bit. I, and then there was randomly also first person narrative of the girl who died as well. Like it was all over the place in that sense, which I wasn't a huge fan of. And it was also just very not interesting. <laughs> I didn't think it was suspenseful. I didn't think that it was intriguing. Uh, I didn't like any of the characters. They were all awful people. And I felt like it kind of like pushed you in certain directions. Like it like pushed you in certain directions so that you wouldn't see the twist coming, obviously, which was also stupid. <laughs> but the things that it used to throw you off, I felt like was just pure lying. Like I felt like they were making certain characters do certain things and say certain things that, like, w they wouldn't say and do. Like, the author was only making them say these things to, like, throw us off their scent or whatever, you know? Like, uh, I didn't really like it. Um, two stars. <laughs> the next book that I read was Tiger Lily by Jodie Lynn Anderson, which is an alternate Peter Pan story. It follows Tiger Lily and Peter Pan, and it's told by Tinkerbell, and it was very sweet. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four out of five stars. Going into it, I thought it was basically, um, like, a pre-Peter Pan story. I thought it was, like, a story of how Peter Pan met Tiger Lily and how he met, met Tinkerbell and stuff, which it is, but it it's not. It's just a different Peter Pan story, because Wendy is in it and everything. It just, everything happens differently than the actual story of Peter Pan, which is fine. Just not what I was expecting. And uh, it was a very quiet, calming story, which I really did like about it. And I thought that all of the interactions between Peter Pan and Tinkerbell were super, super, super sweet. A lot of the interactions between Peter and Tiger Lily were also sweet. And overall, it was just a very nice story. There were some sad, heavier parts in it as well that were done well. Um, I just felt like some of it dragged a little bit, which is not good considering how short it is. Uh, but other than that, it was really good and I really enjoyed it. The next one is one that I, well, I mean, I have the hardcover version of it out in my living room, but uh, I finally finished listening to Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, narrated by Jim Dale. I had originally started listening to it in November and I listened to half of it before it was due back in my library. I was listening to it on the Libby app and it finally became available again in January and I was able to finish listening to it uh, like two or three days before it was due back. And I really, really enjoyed having it on in the background while I was doing stuff. Um, if you know anything about me in audiobooks, I'm not very good at listening to them, so I don't catch the whole thing. Uh, but I do really like having them on, I've discovered. So I use audiobooks to reread books. Um, because I don't really need to get everything because I do already know the story and whenever I am able to pick up on things and pay attention, I really enjoy that. So I really liked listening to Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire was a really good way for me to continue rereading the series because I had reread the first three um, a while ago and I started rereading the fourth one and it was stressing me out because it's a really big book that I've already read and I have so many books I haven't read yet. So listening to it was a, a good way to do that and I'm going to, I think, continue rereading it uh, by listening to them. And I really, really liked 
uh, hearing all the parts that I completely forgot about. Like, there are so many things in it because I'm so used to the movies because I've seen the movies so many times that I forget how different they are. And so I really, really enjoyed being refreshed on how the story originally was. So I just gave it the same rating that I gave it the first time I read it, which was five stars, because I feel like it's not really fair of me to give it a different rating if I wasn't able to, um, like, catch the entire story as if uh, I would have been able to if I was reading it physically. But... Uh, I still wanted to include it because I was able to get a lot. What do you have? That doesn't sound like a toy. I can't remember what I was saying. Anyway, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Hooray! <laughs> and then I finished My Life Next Door by Huntley Fitzpatrick, which I gave three out of five stars. Um, I enjoyed it. It was good. Uh, so this book is about a girl who lives with her mom and her sister and her mom is a senator and is very like prim and proper and has always despised their next door neighbors because they have like eight kids and they're messy and loud and you know a family with eight kids and so she just judges them without knowing them doesn't want to have it doesn't want anything to do with them and the girl in the story i already forget her name Samantha, <laughs> uh, Samantha ends up meeting one of the boys from next door and obviously, you know, a thing develops from that, but she has to keep it a secret or her mom will like disown her and be a stupid mom. Uh, but there was like a lot more to the story, but also I feel like a lot more that was unnecessary. I, I just felt like this book was very long and did not need to be this long. I felt like there was a lot of stuff in it that just made the story feel like it was dragging. And I liked the characters. I really, really liked Jace, the love interest, and his little brother, George. I thought they were great. George was adorable and hilarious. And Jace was super sweet. And I liked his and Samantha's relationship. And also what I really, really liked about it was the way they talked about sex in it. And the way they handled it in the relationship, I really thought that that was, like, a great, like, learning for, for like, if there are younger people reading it who haven't had sex or are thinking about having sex, I feel like this is, like, a good example of a way that you can go about it that is healthy and okay. Like, I don't know how else to explain it without, like, I don't know, telling you how they end up doing it and how they talk about it. But I liked the way that it was handled in this story. So there was that. <laughs> but uh, overall, it was just, a, it was a good book, but uh, I felt like it could have been 100 pages shorter. <laughs> and it just wasn't really anything special, but it was still, it was good. Not really like super memorable though, I guess. And the last book that I read was The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente, and I really enjoyed this. I gave this four to five stars. This is about a girl named September who ends up being whisked away to fairyland, and she meets these witches, and the witches say that someone stole a spoon from her, and they want September to go bring it back to her. And so it's her adventure with this dragon-like creature um, trying to find the spoon. But she ends up meeting all of these different characters and basically going on different adventures. It's just the finding the spoon is what like starts it all. And it was very whimsical and it was very cute. And there were a few lines of dialogue that really spoke to me that I really, really liked a lot. <laughs> I took a picture of one, put it on my Instagram, and then another one I just like wrote it out and then read it to all my friends on Voxer. It's, uh, I really enjoyed it. I'm not sure if I want to continue with the series, though, for some reason. I feel like just this one was good enough for me. I don't know. Um, I really did enjoy it, and I'm really glad that I read it, which is why I gave it four stars. But I guess that's all I really had. It was just a cute, sweet, whimsical, magical story. That was also fun. <laughs> and that's it. Those are the books I read in January. And I really hope that my February wrap-up is just as successful as this one. <laughs> so that's all for now. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And subscribe if you haven't already. Maybe share it with your friends. Leave a comment down below. I guess that's all. Have a good day, guys. Bye.